Welcome back, friends and family, to Creating Hanley. I am the Hanley. That is me at Creating Hanley. So today we are going to continue our crumb quilt adventure. However, I'm going to do something different today. So <clears throat> this is fusible webbing. So it has a rough edge or a rough side and it has a smooth side. And the smooth side is just the fuse or just the webbing. The rough side is the fusible part. This has glue. So I don't know if you can see those little ridges on there. If you've never seen fusible webbing before, or um, yeah, what's it called? Fusible something. <laughs> anyway, oh, let's see, what is this stuff called? Yeah, it's just a Pellon product, fusible interfacing or fusible webbing, something like that. This uh, particular product is Pellon. 931TD this particular one and you can see it's very thin it's like uh, paper thin so if I get a piece of paper here it's like you can see that right paper thin so um, it's not like a batting it's just a uh, an interfacing so anyway I cut a piece for inches by six inches <laughs> it's curling up so I'm trying to keep it from curling so four inches by six inches and the reason I chose that number that uh, brick or rectangle is because ta -da! my other crumb quilts that we're using um, the dryer sheet on the back that is four by six these are four by six so these are the latest ones I've done um, and I'm just gonna sh show you here. So this is the latest. These I I've done blue, so you can see uh, that's my chevron or zigzag. This is the latest one I, uh, that I've done. And so today for this, we are going to use. Let me bring this over here. We are going to use all these cuttings. This definitely, this definitely would be considered waste. Like you would just throw this away. There's no possible way that you could sew with this piece right here. This is definitely waste, right? You would definitely throw that in the trash. There's no way you could sew with that. However, today we're gonna try a new project. So, because this has glue part to it, I'm going to put this onto here, and let's see if that works. <clears throat> One thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this disappearing school glue and just put a little bit on the corners because this is not, um, let me get these out of the way, because this is not activated right now. It only activates when you apply heat to it. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this school glue on the sides here. And uh, maybe a little bit in the center. Okay. There we go. Oops. Now. I don't know if you can hear that rain, but Mother Nature today said, April Fools, we're going to be beautiful in the morning and sunny and warm and all the motorcycles were out today and the bicycles were out and all the people walking their dogs were out today and now it is 1.30 in the afternoon on Saturday, April 1st, and guess what? The rain, the rain, the wind, the thunder, it's coming, it's coming. So that is Pittsburgh, and Mother Nature's like, fooled you, not going to be a nice day today. So that's why I'm inside doing more, ooh, it's really windy, doing more um, sewing instead of outside 
gardening or or uh, furniture today because that's Pittsburgh now hats off to Bella Renovare for uh, finishing furniture in the snow and Dashner Design for finishing furniture in the snow. Ben Bella Renovare, um, Chris Donna of Bella Renovare, shout out to her because she is magnificent. She goes outside in the snow. She lives in Maine and she does her furniture painting outside like it's crazy. And then um, so does Dashner Design. He I don't know where he lives, Minnesota, South Dakota, I don't know, somewhere that it's super snowy, Colorado maybe. And he's outside, like, refinishing furniture outside. I don't know how they do it. It's, I don't even know how the products work, but whatever. So shout out to those guys because they are incredible. One, just for attempting to go outside. And two, because their products work, I don't know. I My hands don't work when it's that cold. Anyway, let's flip down to here. So I'll show you what I'm doing. So this is now sticky a little bit with glue. And I'm just going to place some of these uh, little scraps in strategic places so that I have a little bit of place where I can put my finger without sticking on there. Right? Can you guys see that? I don't know where I can put the camera so you guys can see. So I don't want it to be too contrived, but I definitely want to get these bigger pieces on here. Oops, you can't even see that. In a way that um, will kind of showcase. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. So what I'm doing is I'm, I don't really have a plan, guys. I'm just, this is new. I've never done this before, but I thought, you know what? Let's see what else I can do with these scraps. Because look, this definitely is throwaway stuff, but I'm not going to throw it away. <laughs> so I don't want it to look too contrived like I planned it, but I definitely want to get some of these longer pieces on here like like they were just meant to be you know meant to be oh that flips open like that and so this looks like something that maybe you could do with your kids you know it's like arts and crafts you're just gluing down some fabric onto another piece of fabric just a foundation piece now, do you have to use this? Uh, no, you don't. But I had it available, and so I'm just going to use it. All right. Let's throw this down. Also, I'm, I'm placing it like this because I do want the green to show. I don't necessarily want to just plop it on here and then have these flipped over because this is the green side and this is the back, the white side. So I, I want it to be green, not white. So I'm just trying to put a foundation down here of all this green. And yours can be definitely different. So here's that piece that I showed you in the beginning. Yeah. So just throw down some some scraps onto some fusible and then um, yeah so like the bigger pieces just kind of throw it on the bottom and then the smaller pieces can go on top now here's some yellow. I don't necessarily want yellow, so I'm going to cover that up a little bit. And it'll get covered up on the top too. And let's see, this is like gold, which is great for Irish. Gold and green. So again, here's the back and here's the front. This is very, like a light, very light, and then here's the back. 
So I definitely don't want it to be flipped over for sure. Okay. And here's like a kind of a greenish blue. All right, now that I have the base pretty much covered, that means that all those big pieces are kind of stuck down. Now I'm just going to take this and just throw it on top. And let me show you the next step. So Now there's a bit of a blue piece in here. No real, no true rhyme or reason. I'm just throwing this down. But again, I, I kind of want the, it doesn't have to be. Um, you know, it can be flipped over, but I really do want the color, the most color part facing up. I mean, that's the whole point. You kind of want the color to show. So I have just collected these green scraps. Just the green today. It can be whatever color you want. Um, or it could be multiple colors. It doesn't have to be monotone. So you can do whatever color you want. Uh, this blue-green one I'm just going to leave out for now. And then I think I've pretty much exhausted my my starter pile here. Okay, we'll flip this one over. There we go. All right, now. Now you're, now you're thinking, how are you going to keep that on there? Because most of those aren't even touching the glue. And you're right, they're not. So let me just clean up this little mess right here. This goes into the trash. Oh my gosh, I'm actually throwing something away. That's how much I'm throwing away, that little bit right there. Boop, right into the trash. <laughs> I'm definitely keeping this. This is my uh, dryer sheet. So we'll set that aside. And now this. <clears throat> this is going to be interesting. Let me take you over to the machine. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sew these down. And we'll just see how it goes. I'm going to go slow. Maybe decrease my tension a little bit. Here we go. Just like this, guys. Ah. All right. Now, of course, the presser foot is going underneath these things. So just go a little bit slow. Just kind of stop, lift up the presser foot, pin stuff down. Not pin it down, pin it down with your fingers. Now, make sure you do not iron. You don't want to iron yet because once you iron, that activates the, um, well, I guess you could at this point, you could iron, but it activates the glue. Yeah, I guess at this point you could iron. So I'm just doing straight lines. Now I have green thread in, in the top and green thread in the bobbin. All right. Okay, let's try it this way. Hey guys, I think it might be working. So basically this is just art. I probably don't want to put this into a quilt. 
maybe a bag or maybe even a, a fabric box because that's not going to go anywhere. A bag, you're probably going to be banging that around in and out of your car or, you know, if you're using a tote bag or if you make it into a zipper pouch or something, that might be, that, that might get tossed around. Uh, I probably would not really want to put this through the wash. You might, but it might get all jumbled up, tangled up. Um, it might get uh, disintegrated in the wash. Come, come apart in the wash. So, but this is an experiment. We're just going to try this. So this might be just artwork right here. And then you can make a bunch of them. You could put them in a picture frame. Oh, that didn't really cut. You could just hang it on the wall. You can make a bunch and put them in a mural. You could put it with other um, different materials. So maybe you want to put it with paper, like do some kind of origami or paper mache or uh, you know just some kind of crafting project you can mix and match materials like that substrates you could put it with pebbles whatever works all right guys let's try this so look at this so all I did was you know make some lines straight 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 let's go down this way All right, I'm going to speed this up a little bit right here. Good. Oops, cut that. Let's come around this side. I can speed it up because it's sticking down now. It's not getting caught in my my pressure foot. Check that out. Now, if I do a, a toss test, not much falls out. Look at that. It held. Just just a couple just a couple threads just fell out. That's all. Right there. Can you see that? That's all. That fell out of here. So even if I you know kind of rough this up a little bit, not much has fallen out, guys. Super. All right. So let's take it over to the pressing table. And I'm going to flip it upside down and I'm going to spray it a little bit with water. Now, if you want to have a pressing cloth, you could do that. It's a good idea to get a pressing cloth so you don't get glue on your iron. So I'm just pressing it down in place for 10 seconds or so. And that activates the glue on the fusible. Now, now if you were to use that fusible in a, you know, a quilt or a project that you're going to throw in the washing machine, that glue over time will probably wash out. But hopefully by then, like if you use it in an applique or something, hopefully by then, um, it'll be, you know, sewed down. Yeah, look at this. This is all that is left. This is all that fell off. Not that much, just a couple of threads. All right, and so here we go. Here it is. Rough it up a little bit more. Nothing's really falling out. And... Voila! Now you can cut that off if you want, that piece that's sticking out here. Or it might be, um, you know, cute to you. Hey, I'm just gonna... Actually, I'm just gonna kind of... Yeah, I'll trim it off. Alright. So. And these little... These little threads from, you know, when I sewed it, they can come off too. Not 
Not that that's necessary, but you might not like these little hairs sticking out. Ooh, guys, it's starting to rain. All right, and there we go. How about that new creative adventure right there? Oh, it says Joanne. No, I probably want to cover that up with something. <laughs> yeah, I think I want to cover that up. I don't want these big old letters in there. But anyway, what do you think about that? Is that a cool project or what? I think that works, guys. All right, so try it out. So, you know, rough it up a little bit after you glue it on there, after you sew it on. Oh, this little piece fell off. <laughs> okay, so it may, it may shed. And then maybe you just want to sew, you know, if a piece sheds off, you just stick it back on there, put it back under the needle. And uh, do some more quilt, quilting, quilt topping of it. So I think I will cover that little jit end up over there. And let's put that back under the needle. So I'm just going to cover that part. There we go. Nice. Guys, I love this. I love it. This is awesome. I'm so glad I tried this little project here. Yep, and kids can do it too, and it's super fun. Okay, fantastic. So there we go. So the way that you would stick this into a project, you could still do a quarter inch seam allowance along here if you wanted to sew it into something else, or you could just put this on, I mean, if you just wanted to use it as art, you could stick it on to um, mat, mat, matting, uh, paper, or cardboard, or something, and then put it in a frame. Or you could put it between, I'm just trimming off these little things here. Or you could put it between, you know those plastic um, picture holders? The plastic ones where you just put, you know, it's like f no frame, frameless. So try it out, guys. Rough it up, see what falls off, whatever falls off. If you want it stuck back on, then you stick it back on there. And that is our project for today. And thanks for playing along. I appreciate it. Check that out. A new way to crumb block. It's not even crumbs. This is, yeah, this is crumbs, but it's like, it's like trash bin crumbs. I don't know. <laughs> I have to think of a thing to call this for, for the title. A new way to crumb block. All right, guys, I love it. You have a great day today. Stay warm and dry, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.